So you need bees for your garden? This might be something to help bring some to your garden. So today we're looking at some really cool things to create kind of a habitat for bees for your outdoor plants. And I've got James here from Wildlife World LTD. Good afternoon, James. Hello, how are you? I'm doing well, doing very, very well. We got to see a lot of the cool things that you guys had at the Har National Hardware Show in Las Vegas. And, and it, this is something that we need to talk about because a lot of homeowners and gardeners are struggling with having pollination and things going on and they need the insects. And you guys have got kind of a little habitat home building birdhouse for bees. Let's take a look at that. That's it. Okay, so what we have here, this is our Wildlife World Solitary Beehive. Now, what's good about this one is you locate this in your garden on a south-facing wall, and this would attract the solitary bees, um, predominantly the leaf cutters, the mining bees, and the mason bees. And basically what happened is the bees will just lay the larva inside here, and then they will just, next year, once they start emerging, will start to pollinate your garden. Uh, I think one of the most important things to mention is solitary bees can actually pollinate up to about 85% more than a honeybee can. Mm. So they are tremendously important just in the bee population itself. And then all you do with this one is you literally just locate it into your garden and the bees will come and find it through these little holes just up here and on the tray sections just here. Right. What's really cool about this product is just underneath here, you have your butterfly clips just here. Yes. And what you do is you can actually take these butterfly clips off and the trays themselves actually come apart. Now, what this might enable you to do, because you can take the trays apart, you can actually manage the bees inside. And what I mean by that is, if any parasites or anything gets inside the actual beehive itself, you actually have the ability to remove the, either the dead grubs or the parasites themselves which are in there. And as you can see, it comes apart nicely. So you can see the groove channels just inside. Yeah. Just that. And what that means is that when you actually take them apart and the bees have nested inside, you can actually see the bees, A, developing inside their cells themselves. And as I said previously, you can actually manage the bees, which is a great option for solitary bees. So this, if you just want to do something nice and simple for solitary bees, this is a perfect, perfect product for it. Uh, the beauty of it is there is no maintenance or anything you need to do with it at all. So you don't need to clean, you can clean it out if you wish, but it's not essential. And it will just do a huge amount of pollination for your garden. As I said previously, up to about 85% more than a honeybee will do. So Now with honeybee... James, now with honeybees, a lot of times you have to, to get starter bees, I guess is the best way to describe it. Now, how, would you, how does it work with the solitary bees? So with the solitary bees, you don't actually have to incorporate them, bring them in or do anything at all. You can just have the bees. Um, they will just come to you. So with all solitary bees, they always look for holes in timber, old logs or what normally happens is if a screw is falling out of your garden furniture, uh -huh. the bees actually start to use that hole as well. So they will always look for holes within timber. Um, now with this one, because it's such a nice, clean, fresh timber look, the bees normally find this in around about two to three days, is around about the turnaround time, if you get it in the peak of the season. Mm -hmm. oh. So yeah, that would be the best option for them. Very nice. And then as you, you mentioned, cleaning out, you could, but it's not a mandatory thing. But this is something that you need to take down every couple of years to you know, clean it or, or treat it or anything? Yeah. We all, no, there's no treatments required in any of our products at all. Um, we are really environmentally sound on those sorts of options. So anything which requires paint is always water-based. Um, we don't use any treatments or chemicals in our products because obviously that's derogatory towards the actual insects themselves. So we would use something like cedar, which produces its own natural oils, which preserves it for an extremely long time. Nice. You could take it down after a couple of years if you wish, just to have a good clean out and have a little saute. But in general, it is not essential. It's not something you have to do. It's just something you can do if you wish to work with the bees. Okay. Now, I, I looked on the bottom that you had kind of like a mounting, a couple of little um, cleats there for mounting it on a pole. Is it best to mount it on a pole or to hang it, or does it not matter? No, it's best to actually locate it onto a fence. So you want a minimum of around about 1.2 meters high, around about 4 foot, or the maximum you could really go up to is around about 6 foot. The main thing for the soldier bees is just to ensure that it gets the morning sun. Um, imagine you're sat, you get up in the morning, you want to go and sit in the garden, you have a nice coffee, and newspaper, you want to sit in the sun. Sure. It's the same with the bees. They, they want to catch the morning sun, then go out and do all the pollinating all day, and then when they come back, hive's nice and warm, everybody's happy. So I thought that's the only, only essential things. The height of where it's standing, and it must be south-facing. The right height, south-facing, and that's it. The bees will come and find it themselves. 
Very neat. Now, what about predators? Are there any predators that you mentioned some, you know, some little ter- or bugs and such that could get in there that a person would deal with? But what about larger predators? Are there any that are going to come and bother it? Uh, the only one which we've come across which causes the most problems is the woodpecker, strange enough. So what we recommend is anybody who's installed a sort of beehive, if you know the cells are filled, um, is just to put a small amount of chicken wire just over the front of the hive itself, and that will stop the woodpecker from actually pecking its way to get to the um, baby grubs inside. Interesting. Mm. <laughs> it's amazing how, how Mother Nature works with all those things. <laughs> <laughs> so James, if people like to find out more information about the beehive, where can they go to check it out? So for the storage beehive, this is available on Amazon.com. So it's available across all areas on that side. Nice. Um, and it's also available through a company like the Kinsman Company and also a few others. I believe Rodales um, also stock it as, long as, as well as Wayfair as well. So that there's quite a few, predominantly online channels at the moment which are selling it. We'll put a link in the description below so you guys can go check this out. But this is one of the cool things that a lot of gardeners need to check out and get ready for 2016. James, thank you very much for coming on with us today. You're more than welcome. Thank you for your time. This is John Young with The Weekend Handyman.